Welcome back, everyone. 3D TVs, they're already the rage, but they've only been on sale in Canada for a couple of weeks, and there's frankly not a whole lot you can watch in 3D just yet. But there's a research project underway right now at Ryerson, filmmakers and TV makers trying to figure out the do's and the don'ts for making 3D TV. Mike Wise has more on this at our iDesk. This could be a real burgeoning industry, I guess, for somebody. Of course, and consider we've had 3D for decades, the 50s, the 70s, you know, but there hasn't been a lot of research into just how to do it properly, trying to figure out what angles or effects will work best, or even what impact those movies are going to have on viewers once you can start watching them at, at home. And that is the point of a study being conducted at Ryerson. Why is this room full of filmmakers and TV professionals watching a children's show? It's part of a project designed to help them learn what makes for good 3D TV. The 3D has a very different feel when it's on a smaller screen versus a, 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 theatrical, a theatrical screen. So we're trying to quantify that. Gotcha. Richard Grunberg filmed a special kids show in 3D. This summer he'll be showing it to participants, tracking their eye movements on a computer in order to figure out the effectiveness of various 3D effects. The success of Avatar has Hollywood churning out more and more 3D films, even converting 2D films to 3D. Now, with the introduction of 3D television sets at home, there's a push for more content. But Grunberg says 3D at home isn't the same as in the theater. He hopes this study will help filmmakers tailor the 3D experience for the different markets. On a smaller set, it's not the immersive experience. It's more you're looking through a, a window, a portal, into 3D space and having some 3D space come out to you. Whereas 3D space on a large screen, you're immersed in the environment. I mean, you can see things off to the side of your field of view. Of course, you have the big difference in a theater. The experience only lasts as long as the actual movie uh, once you get it. At, if you have 3D TV at home, you could watch it for hours and hours and hours on end if you have enough content. He says there's no research on what that'll do to you or, more importantly, what it'll do to your kids. And that's another part of the research I'll be looking at next hour. New 3D high-def TV sets in the market. I mean, they're in the electronics stores. They look great. But there's not a lot of content available for them yet. And no one really knows if there are any long-term consequences, especially for your kids, if they've got those glasses on all the time watching 3D. Now a Ryerson University research study is looking for those answers. And Mike Wise has more on it at our iDesk. And they're looking for those answers at a special digital imaging research lab I visited today where researchers are trying to find out what types of 3D effects work best, but also what effect 3D has on your body. So it's following my eyes? My eyes haven't Wherever developed the ability to shoot lasers. See, That's a computer showing me where I'm looking. In this computer lab, cameras track my eye movements as I watch a 3D TV show. We talk about how great it is and how wonderful it is, how immersive it can be, but uh, very few people have spoken about what can actually happen when you're watching 3D. To figure that out, Grunberg filmed a special 3D children's show to show to participants his cameras will record their physiological reactions, facial expressions, heart rate, plus any eye fatigue caused from following all those 3D effects. Grunberg says watching a 3D movie like Avatar on the big screen is one thing. Translating that experience for smaller 3D TV sets at home is another. He also says there's been very little research done about long-term 3D viewing, especially among younger viewers. Particularly the LCD glasses, I mean, they're basically tricking your brain. They're going on, off, on, off, on, off. Uh, they're tricking your brain into seeing 3D. We don't know what these experiences are doing, particularly to the younger viewers. And to bring children and adults into his research lab this summer, not only to test the long-term impact on their bodies, but also whether children perceive 3D differently than adults, whether a special effect should go here on the screen or maybe out there. Now, this might actually help filmmakers to tweak the effects to work differently on a kid's film versus one aimed at older audiences.